Hey guys, what's up? I have a $25 700 watt Apivia Spirit Power PSU. And it looks like this. And it's very light. I have not tested this unit. Quite frankly, I'm very scared to test this unit. Eh, but the video would be quite boring if I didn't test this, well, quite frankly, very hilarious power supply. Now, for about the same price as this 700 watt, completely unrated, no 80 plus gold, no 80 plus anything rating, 700 watt unit, so about 25 to 40 dollars that range, you can get one of these. This is an EVGA 450 BR. I actually picked this up for the exact same price, $25, as this unit. So to do the initial testing of this 700 watt unit, I have this fully built system. Now it doesn't look like much because quite frankly, it isn't. This is an i7-7700, 8 gigabytes of DDR4, a 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD, and an Intel stock cooler on an Asus Prime B250M-A, which is probably the world's worst motherboard for 7th gen Intel chips. It's got a single 4-pin power and a 24-pin, and that's about all you get on the board. Surprisingly enough, it does have two M.2s, which is super crazy, and uh, the NVMe didn't fit right away because it has no standoff, so I had to modify the board to actually fit the NVMe and be able to screw it in, but we've got this 256 gigabyte drive. Let's grab our PVA unit and put it back here. Let's go ahead and move our RTX 3060, which we're not going to be using for this video because that would be absolutely stupid. Oh, this thing's a mess. We have it set it to the 110 volt load. Cheaper power supplies like this will literally have a switch uh, that lets you select between 110 volt and 220. More expensive, better power supplies will simply just not have that option because they do it themselves, but okay. All right, let me get this in the forefront so you guys can see what's going on here. Move the cables out of your way. 700 watt, unrated Apivia unit system that I don't really want to die because an i7-7700 is still pretty decent and worth about $1 to $200. 8 gigs of RAM that I'd rather not lose considering the shortage as well as the NVMe SSD which I couldn't care much about. It's screeching, but it's on. Will we get a post on the system? The system, we got fan spin and everything, we're doing pretty good. And we do have a post on the screen. I don't know if you, I don't think you see the screen. It is off screen, but we got a post, eight gigs of RAM. We see our drive and we can go into our BIOS. Let's just do a boot override. Let's boot to our UEFI. Let's boot to our Windows drive and hope that works. I don't really want to get too close to it, but I will for you guys. That is either a very bad bearing on a fan or that is some electrical noise that should not be coming out of a unit that is responsible for taking 120 volts of AC power, converting it into 12 volt, 3 volt, and 5 volt DC, and then giving it to a $1,000 plus system as you sell so 700 watts. All right, guys, while this is setting up, I want to talk really quickly about the differences between something like this and something like this. So again, this is the EVGA 450BR. It's roughly the same price as you'll find a unit such as this. A 700 watt, unrated, ketchup and mustard, just random unit from a company that you've probably never heard of, or a PVA, which is basically just as bad. So, the one thing that's the same between these two units is price. That is a constant. Let's say you're building a very budget rig. Which one of these should you go with? Now, my recommendation is always spend maybe more than $25 on a PSU, but I can't say that I have not skimped on a PSU to get within a certain budget for a build or have bought used PSUs, which is generally not recommended. And now I can test a PSU using parts that if they die, doesn't really affect me too much, but the average consumer doesn't have a bunch of PC parts laying around or they wouldn't be buying crappy power supplies. So that's why I buy used units, but I still always caution against it. Um, for people unless again you really know what you're doing or you have power supply testers or something like that But again Try to stay away from used units. So for a new let's say we got this new 25 bucks We got this one new 25 bucks. Which one should you go with for your budget build? I want to put it on top of that, but that's running with its fan and overheating is not exactly what we want to do This is not working right now, and I don't know why there we go. Who's gonna use this PC? User is gonna use this PC Let's talk about a couple distances between these units. So, price is the same, wattage is not. 
This is a 450 watt, this is a 700 watt. Now, a lot of people think, well, 700 watts, it's just a better unit. <sighs> Not really. That's really a terrible way to judge things. Now, I can tell some of you might actually be thinking about high-end graphics cards. They take a lot of wattage. 450 watts might not be enough, but 700 might be. Here's the deal. If you are buying a system with a graphics card that combined with your CPU, motherboard, and etc., can use between 5 and 700 watts, you should not be spending $25 on the power supply. That's $75 unit minimum. My opinion, but I think you should be spending more on your unit. 100 bucks, plenty safe. 750 watt, 80 plus gold, something like that. You've got Silverstone, FSP, EVGA, Seasonic, even Thermaltake, who it really depends on what you're going with. I'm not a fan of, of some Thermaltake units, but much better than this. All right, our unit is up and running. Let's see if we can get some YouTube videos playing. So that's the first thing. If you're buying a system that can t handle as much wattage as this is over this, then you shouldn't be buying this power supply. Second off, connectors. That's a very common concern. If you have a graphics card that's not super powerful, but happens to have maybe two six pins, that's very common with older cards. Like let's say you're getting a system with a GTX 980. That card, the Founders Edition, does have two six pins as opposed to an eight or an eight and, an eight and a six. It has two sixes. So you want a power supply that has more than one eight pin connector or more than one six pin. 700 watt unit, 100% will most likely always have that. In fact, this one has exactly that to eight pins. But here's the thing, even a lower wattage unit from a good company will also have just that. It's got two six plus two pin PCIe power cables. So if you happen to have a card like a GTX 980 or something that you're going with a budget system, this unit, its cables will work just fine. And the wattage, 450, yeah, that's pretty low. But if you're rocking something like a GTX 980 and maybe something like a, a 7700, you'll be absolutely fine because that's maybe a 350 watt system. It appears our drivers have installed Intel HD Graphics 630. You know, maybe no one uses Microsoft Edge because every time you log into Edge, it tells you about how great Edge is. No, I don't want a complete setup. It's f***ing Edge. Now I'm going to be completely honest. I 100% expected this APV unit to blow up. I expected it to either blow up or not work. I'm quite frankly still quite scared. Also, it's very loud. Let's just say you have a very tight budget. I want to be as thorough as possible. I got to back up my claims. But let's say in some random giveaway, you just so happen to win an RTX 3060. But you still have your old budget rig and you're just going to throw that in. You've got your i7-7700 non-K. You've got your 8 gigs of RAM and a 256 gigabyte NVMe. And your EVGA 450 BR. Now this isn't an ad for the EVGA 450 BR. This is an ad for better power supplies. It just happens to be the lowest wattage uh, power supply that I have. That's a decent rating. That was a decent price, 25 bucks. So here we go. We've got the new RTX 3060. This is a 12 gigabyte card. Takes up a lot of power. I think NVIDIA recommends a 600 or 500 watt unit for this. I'm gonna go with the 450 and I'm gonna load this thing up with games with our quad core CPU. And well, we're gonna see if I'm right that a 450 watt unit with a good efficiency rating is absolutely fine. Now let's see if this 450 watt unit can handle a quad core CPU and an RTX 3060 while gaming. That should be a full 100% load. Let's see, this is Rainbow Six Siege rendered at 4K. Our GPU is at 100% utilization. This is the max power of our system. Wow, actually at 4K, this thing's only running about 60 FPS. That's insane. But we've got our GPU maxed out. Our CPU is half maxed out. Our CPU is also running pretty hot. This is basically a full load on the system. If I've ever seen it. I can't see a thing. Not the most responsive experience on this planet. We really are maxing out this GPU. Our quad core stock cooled 80 degree Intel chip is not even at 100% utilization here. Why does this card have 12 gigs of VRAM? I do not know. It's only using four of it at 4K. If you ask me, I'd say it's for, it's for mining. I think NVIDIA is operating like a secret mining facility. That's why they put 12 gigs on the 3060. So they could just like remove the limiters and just mine with like a thousand of them for a lot of money. 
using a VRM intensive mining application. Hit subscribe for more conspiracy theories. I mean, it's more sane than Linus's take on the, I died. It's more sane than Linus's take on the, uh, the 3080 Ti. Just gonna say that right now. But, I think I've proven my point. I've been running this card, this is a 3060, a 7700, 8 gigs of RAM in it, this entire system, at 100% utilization. This power supply probably barely broke a sweat. This is a 450 watt unit. So even if your system has up to a 3060, so if your system is, you're on a budget, but you somehow get an MSRP 3060, which is considered a budget card, I guess, you can rock a 450 watt unit like this for 25 to 40 bucks and still be absolutely fine. So there's no reason to grab something like this that could potentially destroy your system. Again, I really want to, and I had actually planned on testing it with like a graphics card and seeing if I can max it out. I've got two problems. I don't actually have a card that has two eight pins that could max out the wattage of that unit. You know why? Because it only has two eight pins on the power supply for a 750 watt. Any other 750 watt unit that I've used has four, or at least three, but usually four, eight pin connectors, two daisy chains. Then I could run a Radeon Pro Duo that has three eight pin connectors or two graphics cards to get three or four. But instead, I literally couldn't max out the wattage so it wouldn't matter. I can max out the wattage on this, can do pretty good, can run an eight pin, two eight pins, and be completely fine. So, if you're rocking, and this is a pretty high end 3060, it takes up a lot of power, it's on performance mode too, not even quiet mode. So, bottom line, avoid crap power supplies. Don't just pay 25 bucks. Don't buy cyber power PC systems because that's the kind of crap they put in them. Go for a good unit from a good brand, even if it's a lower wattage than some crap unit you can buy for the same price. This video took a lot of turns, turns and twists and I hope you guys kind of enjoyed. I had just meant to test the unit, but nothing interesting happened. I was kind of hoping it blew up because that'd be good content. But this is the point. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys kind of enjoyed. Make smart choices, especially when it comes to your power supplies. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.